All right. Hi, Knut. So where are you right now? I'm in Falun, Sweden. Uh, we just finished uh, about a five-hour drive from Orisam. Nice. And it looked like the day of the race was kind of mild and slushy snow. How was it? Uh, yeah, it was uh, just above zero. And um, yeah, it was a bit, a bit foggy, not the best visibility. Uh, I don't, no one was actually wearing sunglasses kind of because he had that like fog and kind of just it would just kind of build up on your lens and uh you couldn't really see so that was pretty it's pretty um typical i think of this region and kind of similar to we had that in same kind of weather in kusmo earlier this year i think it must be something about i don't know scandinavia yeah, <laughs> scandinavian yeah. fog awesome <laughs> Awesome. And um, so, yeah, pretty uh, pretty phenomenal. Canada's best relay result ever for yeah. the men's team and first World Cup medal for you. An amazing ski. Yeah. So can you put into words how you're feeling now? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, it's pretty hard to put into words, but um, I guess it's just, it's just a uh, crazy overwhelming satisfaction of so many years of hard work paying off all at once I mean um, just last week I learned that I qualified for my first ever world championships and now in now the very next weekend in one race I just won my first world cup medal and qualified for the olympics all in one day so it's kind of yeah it's hard to hard to explain but it's just kind of yeah, best best day of my life. So. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So, and uh, yeah, your skiing career started at Mount Lauren and Whitehorse Cross Country Ski Club, and now your World Cup dream just came true. Like, yeah, obviously a uh, super, super high. But uh, getting there, there's definitely, you know, as an athlete, I know there's lows. And how do you get through those lows? Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I certainly go through a lot of, a lot of those like kind of rough phases where you get in a slump and actually even just earlier this year I I was kind of started the year on the World Cup for the first time uh first time ever and it was it was a big learning curve like I I I went from being used to kind of being near the top and in, in Canada and being on the top of the Norams and fighting for the win and then I, I got over here and like it really is just like crushed my spirits when I, you know, give everything and push as hard as I could to the line and like come across in 70th position. I mean, it's absolutely demoralizing and it's, it's hard to kind of overcome that. But um, I mean, I saw like you learn from your teammates and um, I mean, I saw Daria do kind of like she was right where I was right. to start. I mean, finishing right at the back of the pack. And then like the following week, she's, she's like something just snapped and like, she's right in there scoring world cup points. And amazing. Kind of, uh, it kind of, yeah, made, made me see that like, yeah, it's, it's, it's right there for you to take. And it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, what might seem so far away is actually so close. And, um, yeah, it really things things can turn around really quickly. So you just gotta kind of keep a positive attitude instead of trying to make and trying trying to force the results. You kind of right. just let let them come. It's almost like the more you want it, sometimes the farther it is away. But but really, it's just uh, yeah, it's just about kind of being happy and positive, and then um, and then the results are are going to come, whereas sometimes you get caught up thinking, I need the result to be right. happy and positive, so it's just, nice. uh, it's just, yeah, it's really a, really a learning curve, and you just got to, I think, stay, yeah, just, just stay at it, and know, uh, know that it's possible. Awesome, awesome, and um, so during the footage of the race, it was fun because Jonathan and I watched it and we were sitting there thinking like, oh, it'd be so fun to watch this with Canute to hear like the play-by-play. -play. But um, 
in the exchange zone, like in the footage, the race camera kind of panned to you stepping into your skis and um, you looked pretty focused and, and pretty serious. What were you thinking? Like what was going on at that moment? And what were you thinking waiting for Alex? Um, I don't know. You know, we're like, even though Canada's never won a medal and in this event before, and we don't really have any history of doing well at all I think the best ever was maybe a uh, fifth place and that was way way back in maybe 2009 so it's yeah it's, but we're actually re- really confident in ourselves and Lenny and I were, were sharing a room together and I uh, we kind of woke up the morning of the race and we kind of looked at each other like this is the day like Sweet. we can do this and, <laughs> and um it was just like we we knew we'd see the course and like we're we knew everyone's in shape and and like we looked at the start list and looked at the other guys in the start list and like we beat these guys before like there's there's awesome. like, we know how to like it's a good course for us too and like yeah. we know we have good skis for these conditions like there's nothing holding us back and and like I Alex and Devin are such World Cup veterans like I knew when when they were coming, when they were going out on their legs, like I was pretty confident that they would tag me off in a good position. And sure enough, like Alex tags me off right with the lead. And yeah, I knew that like all I can do from that point on is just just, like ski the best I best, the best I can and just kind of, yeah, live, live in the moment and just kind of know, know what I got to do to be the fastest right then. And, um, yeah, I just kind of t- tucked in behind the, the other guys and put my head down and yeah. just went for it. And, you know, before before you know it, like, the first lap is over and then you're on, you know, you only got a couple K left in the race. And then when uh, Marcus Hellner put in the attack, like, I just kind of got caught a little bit off guard. But so a little bit of a gap opened up, but yeah. not... Um, I don't know. I, I I pushed up, pushed really hard up and over the top of the big climb, and yeah, like there's still they, it never really got any bigger, and then uh, we actually started kind of closing back in on them, and yeah, yeah. By the time there's like just less and less, less and less trail left in the race, and I just <laughs> knew that I was gonna get like just make it to land and just tag him off in a good position and. It was just so relieving to finally like round that corner into the stadium, and I, 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 I just knew that like when I saw Len was in contact and with the with the lead group and the the way he's been skiing, like winning the team sprint with Alex last weekend, yeah, and the distance race the the just the day before, like I knew that he he would do his part and kind of everyone just focused on their own race and did the best they could individually and we knew it would work out as a team like that and yeah when Len Len went out on his race and kind of like the pace was a a little bit slower and he he was right right in the group and yeah I knew he had such a strong sprint at the end that like he was trying not trying not to be too confident but (laughs) like but like I, like I knew that like he's got such a good sprint. I knew it was right. going to be re- really exciting finish. And yeah, there's um, got to be a point where you realize like, holy crap, this is really happening. Yeah, I was actually kind of like I didn't even know where to go after the after I finished my race. I was just kind of following the other skiers and yeah. uh, ambling al- along the wrong way. And Alex and Devin kind of grabbed me and turned me around. Like we got to <laughs> go to the finish. Like I was going to podium. <laughs> We we go to the we go to the finish and we're kind of standing there with all the other athletes like watching the big video draw and then yeah. and like Len comes into view and we're like then the like the 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 guys from Fist start like handing us like podium skis and they're oh, like cool. just just in case we're on the podium and then we're like put your bibs back on and yeah like, so we're get we're getting all geared up and then. Just like yeah, on the edge of our seats, watching Len come around the last corner, and just once he was once he was in the finish shoot, like we knew, like yeah, he's, he's gonna cross, like he's 
top three yeah. for sure. Yeah. And, I mean, he almost even sniped second. Yeah. So, Super yeah, it was, close. It, was, it was crazy. We just were, I mean, it was the best feeling just running across the, to, I don't know, greet, greet Len in the finish and everyone, everyone's just crowding around and all the wax techs and support <laughs> team. Yeah. Everyone is just jumping up and down. Like it was, yeah, it was, it was absolutely crazy. <laughs> It was awesome, even just to watch the replays. You could yeah. tell the emotion in the moment, and yeah, so yeah. exciting. And and so it's interesting in a team relay because, you know, obviously those guys are your Team Canada's teammates, but a lot of times you're actually competing against each other. So how does that, yeah, how does that play in, and how does it feel different? Um, I mean, for me, it's like, it's... I've I've always I mean I'm I'm such a World Cup rookie compared yeah. to all of my other teammates on right. the on the team. I mean Alex he's wins World Cups now like wow. pretty yeah. often and like Devin's been second overall in the World Cup. Len has I think seven podiums to his name now, so wow. it's it's really hard for me to like <laughs> <laughs> to be like at all I don't know competing and competing against them like I'm still just at that kind of level where I'm um yeah I still just look up to those guys and we're always we're always just so um just happy for each other and we're it's really even in even in individual events we're always kind of we're we're still like happy as a team when when Alex won his his gold medal the day before yeah. like it was a it was a gold medal for Canada it wasn't right. like it wasn't like Alex's medal alone. I mean, it was like yeah, so much, so much support, support staff, and I mean, it, it's not. I mean, Alex is a, an amazing athlete, but I mean, he has he has all of the support staff behind him and his teammates. Like we're we're all training together in in Park City in the fall, and we did like all our training camps in the summer. We're all working together and pushing each other. And awesome. it, it really it benefits it benefits everyone. And the same thing when we're racing, it's uh, we're we're all just kind of pushing each other and helping each other get better and kind of feeding off feeding off each other's successes. Like when when Alex won yesterday, it kind of just fueled our our relay team. So, <laughs> yeah, I bet. So yeah, I bet. It's always it's always good. Um, yeah, watching your teammates uh, excel. Yeah. Yeah, and I think too, like, I mean, at least from what I've experienced in that you, you know, being able to even just show up and race at that level elevates your own experience and your future, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, yeah, it's a big, it's a big uh, learning curve, but yeah, the more you do it, the more, the more it feels normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get that podium feeling normal, eh? That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now the night before, it you uh, like you must have been pretty stoked, you knowing you're heading into this relay with these other three guys, and but I assume nervous, excited. Like, how do you? How did you keep calm? Uh, how, what uh, did you have certain things going through your mind, or that you had to like tell yourself to to keep it together? I don't know. You know, like I'm not. I'm not, I was actually wasn't really nervous. I mean, our team, like this is the first ever podium for, yeah. for our, our team for, uh, yeah, for the men's relay in, in history. So yeah. I think, uh, I did one other relay in my life that was last year in Nova Mesto and we finished okay. ninth. Okay. And when we crossed the line in ninth, like everyone, it was the same, like we crossed the finish line and like. I got rushed by my teammates. I was answering that one, and like yeah. we were absolutely stoked. So you yeah. can imagine if we were stoked on a ninth place finish, you can imagine how stoked we were, were to be on the podium. So yeah, yeah. But we were we were really the underdogs in this race, so there was that. There's absolutely no pressure, really. So it was great, right. and I knew that. Like, of course, I wanted to p perform for my teammates, but yeah. Um, but yeah, they're they're so they're so easy going. Like no one would be had had Len Clark crossed in sixth or seventh place. Like there would have been no 
no hard feelings. Like right. it's all, it's all like we would have support each other no matter what. So it's not, I, and I knew that it would be the same if I, if I fell or if I broke a pole or didn't have a good race, I knew it would be like, you, you know, your teammates are going to stand behind you yeah. and support you. They're awesome. not going to lash out at you so yeah. if, if you don't have a good result. So there's really no pressure. And, awesome. uh, yeah, especially for um, for us not having ever been on the podium before. I think, yeah, we really felt like we won even though we are third. Like, you could see, <laughs> yeah. you could see, like, the Swedes were actually kind of upset that they lost the win. And, I mean, for Norway, the win is just, like, normal right. for them. So right. it's just, like, we were really the winners today. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, we had, the, we had the biggest smiles on our faces on the podium. So That's awesome. <laughs> that a, yeah, it was so- really so right. good to be able to to revel in that accomplishment for your team right i mean sure you can measure it against norway or sweden or whatever but for you guys that's that's what it was and and those smiles show it it was awesome yeah yeah it was, i mean it's going to it's going to have a lasting impact for sure i mean i'm still kind of taking in what happened and um it's it's going to it's going to be something that we remember for the rest of our lives for sure um yeah. And yeah, if no. you, like, in, in, I don't know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, like, what do you hope you remember from this day? Uh, I mean, there, there's so much to remember. I mean, it was, the race itself was was great. I mean, there's, the and to do it on a, a course in um, in Sweden here that had, like, 50,000 fans watching us yeah. like every every inch of the course was just packed with spectators like it was absolutely amazing to have that many people there like so excited about a ski race like yeah. the excite the excitement level was just off the radar we had to have like all these all these fans and the I mean, all the athletes, all the all the coaches, all the wax acts. Like we were just overwhelmed with joy. Like it was, it was just something that's, yeah. Since it's it's the first first time in history that Canada makes a podium in the men's relay, so it was, it was, yeah. It's, it's going to be something that stays with us for the rest of our lives. That's awesome. And um, as far as like technical aspects, like first off, equipment and wax and stuff everything obviously was dialed and felt good and yeah um yeah I mean our our skis were really good and that that helped but I think I think most most of the teams had had good skis and okay but uh yeah it was just like we had we had everything everything going in our favor like there's really nothing nothing holding us back that day and we just uh everything everything went according to plan and we like, yeah, we just, we, we were pretty confident. Like we, we knew that, <laughs> like I was saying, when Len, Len and I woke up in the morning, we looked at each other and like, this is the day. Nice. It, it was the day. <laughs> what a good feeling. And how about like the course looked obviously hard, but it looked super fun and dynamic. How did it feel out there? And our end coupled with that question, like, are there technical bits of your technique that you've been working on uh that you felt good about during the race um yeah i mean the the course uh, world cup courses are always hard yeah. <laughs> they're 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 never easy and even even an easy course you make it hard by going as fast as you can right. so yeah but um this this course was particularly um i think suited to us like we yeah. the classic portions had a had a a big long striding hill and the the skate legs were kind of kind of faster terrain and really flowy which was good for good for me and Len and um I just um yeah it's really it was really good practice for me to have like one one relay behind me that one that I did last year yeah um in in Nova Mesto in Czech Republic so I I kind of knew the the feeling of skiing behind um skiing behind the what uh however many guys maybe there's eight eight or nine guys there in in my group so yeah uh, it's kind of the same 
in the last relay that I was in. So to be able to follow, and I mean, these are the best like world champions and Olympic champions that I'm following. So it was, it was, yeah, just to kind of feel how they ski and yeah. how, how smooth they are and to be able to ski behind them. So I think almost more important than thinking about like, like bits of technique or that, um, try like rather than rather than think about like getting my getting my hips forward or my skis this way or that yeah. way it's more just like do what they do like right, right. Look, look at the best look at the best skiers in the world skiing in front of you and just follow them and yeah, yeah ski ski like them <laughs> awesome awesome yeah I guess at that like with I mean that's about the training too right like you you work on perfecting technique and training yeah. and then it just becomes this background yeah to to ski yeah. from and I, I think that's like such an important part about like gaining experience whether right. it's whether it's going outside of the Yukon and racing at your first Arctic Winter Games and you know following around the the top skiers there and right. then, like for for me like gaining World Cup experience and um like this is kind of it's kind of my first full year in the World Cup, and like yeah. I was saying, the first the first period in December, like it was really pretty tough for me. Like it was yeah. it was kind of like as as what like it was a rough it was a rough period going over there and just getting getting crushed. But uh, yeah, I like tried to kind of come home for Christmas, digest it, and kind of see what I I learned from it, and yeah. like looking back is just like kind of yeah following other skiers and seeing how they ski and you just kind of get get the feeling and the rhythm and right right so you just kind of get uh yeah get to know get to yeah it's just the more familiar you are with with uh what the level is here then then it's just makes it way easier to ski at that level yeah that's awesome because you kind of have to yeah yeah you have to see and be where you want to be and yeah. uh yeah sometimes it's crushing and and then you yeah. surprise yourself or you achieve yeah. what you want and yeah best feeling in yeah. the world yeah that's awesome so cool. now i think from my point of view as a yukoner i think on in an athletic uh realm you as a Yukoner, you kind of have something special in your back pocket and, uh, based on sort of life experience here and would you agree? And, and what would you, uh, yeah. What do you, what do you think about that? I mean, yeah, you definitely, we have everything going for us. I mean, we have such a, such a supportive community and, um, I mean, obviously our, like our, our programs, like our, I mean, Alain's program that he, he has going at the Whitehorse Cross Country Ski Club is absolutely amazing. I mean, seeing, I mean, I, I remember how excited I was four years ago or three years ago when Emily qualified for the Olympics. And, um, like, it's just like, you're always just seeing, seeing, um, this, it's like a constant train of, right. of athletes kind of that are just, flowing flowing through the system and um it's it's just such a successful program and to um to just yeah look look up and see see uh see the success that's come out of it and um and then the the community i mean everyone's when i'm when i'm struggling or having a hard time like there's there's so many people to to kind of help you get back on your feet and um keep going and just like yeah I like after after yesterday is kind of real like just how many people I have got so many so many all the emails I got like it was is it, it was crazy how much how much support I had. and um yeah we're just getting a bit of uh, static. I don't know if your hands maybe on the mic or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So the support coming in and the messages have been pretty, uh, pretty copious. I bet. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's 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 been amazing to to hear all the all the encouragement and uh, 
yeah, support. I mean, White Horse is White Horse is amazing. I mean, I've known this for a long time, but <laughs> but yesterday, yesterday for sure is just it was it was so so encouraging to see. Um, yeah, how many people are just so supportive. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So. Um, Thank you so much. Uh, I think you've you've given us a really good taste of what it what your day was like and how this experience has been. Um, one last question: Do you speak Korean? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll have to learn. <laughs> yeah, you got to practice up. Practice up. Good work, Knut. Thanks so much. And um, yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be cheering every step of the way. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, White Horse. <laughs>